sharpening your photographs in Lightroom. It sounds so easy, but I see a lot of photographers doing it in the wrong way. So in this video, I will explain you the best way to sharpen your photos in Lightroom Classic CC. To sharpen your photograph, you can go to detail and it's very easy to just use the amount slider and think that you're done. But one important thing to realize is the amount of sharpening really depends on the type of photo photograph you have. So in this case, it's a landscape. Uh, maybe it is a, a cityscape photo. Maybe it is a portrait photo. Maybe it is wildlife photography. They don't need the same amount of sharpening or the way you apply sharpening is different. So that's one important thing to know. The other thing that's very important is the purpose of your photograph. Are you going to publish it online in Instagram or in Facebook or are you going to make a huge print of it? When you make a huge print, you need way more sharpening than when you upload a photo. So let's have a look at this photograph first. This photo was taken by a Sony A7R3 camera, uh, a camera with quite a lot of uh, megapixels. And in general, if the camera has a lot of megapixels, you can also apply uh, quite some sharpening. So let's zoom in a little bit. I'm here in 200% to clearly see what we uh, are doing. And the default setting of sharpening is 40. But in my experience, you can increase it to like 80 in in quite easy way for uh, photographs with so many megapixels. So in this photograph that goes quite well. You see that there's more sharpening. I toggle it off and on. So that's quite a big difference. But as you can see, uh, there's also a little bit of grain in the water right here. And there's nothing to sharpen here because it's, the water is very smooth. So you don't want that to be sharpened. You only want to sharpen basically the places where there is more structure and the places where there are some edges. So to make that happen, you can apply a mask. And basically when I apply sharpening, I always apply a mask because with the mask, you can tell Lightroom only sharpen the photo where there is really detailed structure. So as you can see, with masking, now it's close to 90 now, I only sharpen the big stones in the front and the mountains in the back. And that also results in no grain anymore in the water, but keeping the sharper stone in the foreground. And once again, this is 200%, this is 100%, and let's check the difference. So this is without, and this is with, so there is a difference. Another thing that's very important by applying um, sharpening is the camera you use, the type of RAW file. This one was taken by a Sony camera. Uh, this photograph was taken with a Fujifilm X-T2 camera. And it's a different type of RAW file. And Lightroom cannot handle all RAW files in the same way. And sometimes it kind of struggles. And to show you that, and that's kind of an issue with the X-T2 or the X-series of the Fujifilm uh, cameras with the RAW files. If I apply sharpening like very, oh, let's do it to the maximum. And I zoom in to 200%. Then as you can see, it results not in grain, but it is like little curves like little worms. So it's a really strange way of sharpening. And honestly, I don't like this too much. So that's very risky, uh, in this case, for the Fuji X cameras to sharpen your photo and don't go too far. Even with a value like 80 that work out really well with my Sony camera, it still looks very ugly. Not only here in the, the sky and the water, uh, we can remove the sharpening there by applying a mask like this, but you also see it back in uh, the buildings here. So it doesn't give a very good result if you apply too much sharpening. So sometimes the type of raw file and the camera you use is also um, a factor that's really important 
to decide how much you can sharpen your photograph. So, in this photograph, in the previous one, I applied 80. Uh, it's quite a lot of sharpening. It's also a good amount of sharpening for uh, online use. If I really want to make a, a huge print of it, maybe I'll apply even more. So, but for online use, this is perfect. So another type of photograph is, for example, a portrait. You don't want to apply too much sharpening in a portrait. It can be nice for the hair and for the eyebrows, but you don't want to sharpen the skin too much. So if I apply like 80 sharpening here, I think it's going to be uh, too much. I prefer a little bit the more softer skin. It can work if you like it, you can you can do it, but I prefer to apply a mask here also. And what you see is not only the portrait that got sharpened, but also the things in the background. And then it really depends on how yeah, many details are visible in the background to sharpen. So this is um, well, this is a way to apply it for a portrait. Uh, let's go. To a wildlife photo where the sky uh, where the background is more blurry uh, I can do it here in the same way so I apply the sharpening the amount I put it around 80 I apply masking but because in this photograph there is way m more detail in the, in the ground and in the background it also sharpens that part so what I usually prefer if I only want to sharpen a little part of the photograph I don't use uh, the amount here I uh, even put it in zero, then I go to my adjustment brush and with the adjustment brush I apply sharpness. I zoom a little bit in uh, depending on uh, the, the colors and in this case there is quite a big contrast between uh, the penguin and uh, the background so what I can do I can Paint it in. Let's check my brush settings. Well, the flow is 100, uh, density is 100, so that is good. I turn on auto mask. I want to see the mask overlay just to check what I have selected. And in this way, I can also sharpen a subject. And this is a more accurate way, of course, because now I only sharpen my subject and not the background anymore. So one of the tricky things of course with the adjustment brush is that you uh, select too much so that you select a little bit of the, of the grass in this case. Uh, if you select only with sharpening a little bit of the grass it's not a big issue because it's, uh, you cannot see it in the end. Another way of making your selection a little bit better is by using the, the range mask and especially because this subject has quite a big uh, contrast with um, the rest of the photo it is in a good way of doing it so basically what you can do based on luminance or color you can say uh, which part to sharpen well I'm not going to do that now uh, it's about sharpening uh, in this uh, tutorial so when you select it everything now it is sharpened uh, of course you can change uh, the amount of sharpening by going back to the adjustment brush uh, the dot right here where you started and from there on you can move the amount of sharpness uh, it's better to see when you turn off the mask overlay so let's turn that off and now you can apply well, a little bit of sharpness or we apply a lot of sharpness so I think this, uh, this is my preferred way for sure when I do uh, small subjects uh, I don't want to sharpen the whole photograph uh, this is also a way you can apply for portraits because in a portrait you can basically select the hair only or the eyebrows only or the eyes only you have to zoom in uh, quite a lot uh, to make a good selection but that's the most accurate selection and way of sharpen photos uh, in my opinion so some important things to uh, remember the type of photo is really important uh, in general for landscape photos you want to apply a lot of sharpening for portrait uh, not so much 
Uh, for wildlife, you can apply a lot of sharpening, but only in some parts of the photograph where the wildlife is visible. Uh, also, the purpose of your photo is really important. For big prints, you need more sh sharpening. It will look nicer when it's hanging on the wall. And the last thing that's very, very important and uh, overlooked by many photographers, the way Lightroom process your uh, raw file in, uh, in the tool. So depending on your camera, it can work out really great. But as you uh, can see in this photograph taken by a Fuji X camera, the sharpening doesn't look very nice. So maybe you want to use another tool for sharpening and don't use the sharpening in Lightroom. So let me think uh, what your thoughts are, are about sharpening uh, by leaving a comment and below this video. Uh, maybe you have some extra tips uh, related to this topic. Uh, all information you share will be valuable for everyone uh, watching this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.